And hello and welcome back to this episode of Five Alarm Task Force. If you're watching us on video, we are just starting. If you're listening to us on the audio, glad to have you back. And we're glad to have you as listeners. I'm your host, Steve Green. And with me today is a longstanding uh, supporter, a guest, repeating guest on the podcast. But this is the first time I get to interview him alone without his partner. And his partner, many of you know, uh, as Chief Dan Kerrigan, and my guest today is Captain Jim Moss. And Jim and Dan, of course, for over the years, since I've been interviewing them since 2016, have focused on firefighter health, wellness, fitness for duty, uh, the behavioral cancer, the behavioral initiative, the, the cancer initiative. But Jim took a little turn this time, and he wrote, I haven't had a chance to read the book, but I read all, I think it was 12 pages I printed out of 100 uh, that really impressed me. Um, and we'll discuss those in a minute. Let me just introduce you to my guests, uh, to my, my, our listeners. Uh, captain Jim Moss is captain at the Metro West Fire Protection District in St. Louis County, Missouri. He is the co-author of the best-selling book, Firefighter Functional Fitness. He is also the author of the new book, Firefighter Success, 20 C's to Firefighter Excellence. The, cap the captain is a certified personal trainer peer fitness trainer, and he shares his message nationally, speaking at major con fire conferences and fire departments. Cap, it's a pleasure to welcome you back to the show. It's so fun to be here again, especially under a different uh, kind of guise instead of uh, sure. fitness. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. And thanks for and having me yet, on. And yet, in reading these over yesterday afternoon a couple of times, you threw in a couple of things that do still pertain to fitness. And I like that. But I liked the expansion. You took, yeah. and I took my my uh, magic highlighter, and um, I, I marked off some a bunch of them. You know, you, there are twelve pages here, and um, and some of them are great. I mean, they really speak to the guy or gal who's thinking of becoming a firefighter. It speaks to that guy or gal in the academy. It speaks to them. So those same two when they're assigned their first station and their probies and it speaks to them when they were five years, 10 years, 15 years. This speaks to every firefighter from the wannabe to the veteran. And, yeah, and that's the key. That was, that was my goal. So the document you're talking about is the 101 rules for firefighter success, right. which is the free download at uh, my website for the book, firefightersuccessbook.com. And so I basically took those 101 rules for firefighter success directly from the book in one way or another. And I wanted to give uh, the potential readers or readers a taste of what they could expect from the book. And so the book, along with the document you're talking about, the free download, is really a bunch of advice that's been passed on down to me uh, from my mentors, from my personal experiences, from my mistakes as well as, as we all have our mistakes sure. and we learn from them in the fire service. Um, and I just really, you know, the goal behind the book, the goal behind that document you're talking about, it, it all comes back to passing it on to the next generation and the current generation as well and helping them to really achieve and expand their potential as firefighters and as, as just as human beings in their personal lives as well. So uh, a lot of what's in the book and in that document isn't only applicable to being in the fire service, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's applicable to everything. Personal, le personal leadership principles that, that will help everyone succeed and achieve excellence no matter where they are in, in life, whether like you said, someone who's thinking about becoming a firefighter or someone who is a new firefighter or even a senior chief, you know, so they're Absolutely. personal leadership principles that apply to everybody. And, and they're also life guiding principles. You don't have to be a firefighter. You don't have to be in public safety. These are great life guiding. Some of these are great life guiding. That's and right. Then, let's just look at the, in the first, in the first 10, be humble. Humility is the foundation to success. I really believe that. Amazing. It, it is. Be teachable and curious to learn every single day. Well, that's something that you and Dan and I share with teachers, we're lifelong educators, um, and that's very important to us. And we always, even in our discussions, even about fitness, we always talk about the idea to always be open to learn something new. And then when you do and you master it, learn to get, share that with somebody else the way somebody shared it with you. That's right. That's um, right. Be the hardest worker, both on and off the fire ground. Yep, in the firehouse, at home, where, wherever you are, be the hardest worker. 
know that there are no shortcuts to success. That's right. That's, that's a great, right. that's a beauty. That's there's, definitely the life lesson. That's right. There's no uh, overnight success. And if people believe that, you know, they don't see the uh, ton of work that you put in before your quote unquote moment of success or, you know, when you finally appear on the scene or you uh, arrive at success. And uh, me personally, I don't really believe that anyone arrives at, su at success. I believe it's just a continuous journey to, you know, we're continuously expanding our potential, uh, trying to get better and uh, in that. And like you already talked about, teaching others to, you know, follow in your footsteps. And uh, hopefully if you have mistakes or life lessons that you can teach them as well from what you've learned, you know, teach them those lessons as well. Yeah, well absolutely. And of course, be nice. <laughs> it doesn't cost you anything and it really isn't that hard, right? And, and, it, and this is not something you'd expect in a fire, a book promote, you know, promoting the fire service and how to be good in the fire service. But those two words, your parents taught you that when you were first talking and could understand words. Then I think, uh, I think uh, as a society, I think we could use a lot more of that nowadays. Voice. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Love number nine, when in doubt, train more. Exactly. And like you said before, it's not only, you know, your hands-on skills or your didact didactic knowledge, you know, also your physical fitness, you know, uh, training doesn't just pertain to, you know, those two things. It also pertains to our physical fitness, as you mentioned before. You know, it's funny because I w took a walk the other morning to walk the dog and I still have my jacket from the second volunteer department I was in. And for many years that I left them in 85 when I got hurt for many years it was very difficult for me to zip that jacket up so, <laughs> well after losing the weight i plan on losing in in 17 or 17 in 2018 with, with dropping 40 pounds and then when i wound up getting sick last fall i dropped almost another 30 which i wasn't planned on doing it just happened because of the illness uh when i took a walk the other day i was able to zip it right up just like when i was in that fire, fire hey, there you go there you go just like that yeah it's it's amazing it, it really is and I love this number 10, which I think maybe even would be higher, but you strive for progress, not for perfection. That's right. That's right. All we can do is really aim to make progress. And I really believe in, in setting goals. Um, I, I believe that uh, everyone needs to have goals, whether they're lofty goals or, or short-term small goals. Um, and like we said before, whether you're the rookie or whether you're the senior chief, everybody has to have goals. And, uh, you know, by achieving those small milestones, you know, those small victories within those goals, that's how we build momentum. That's how we have inertia. And uh, it, it kind of projects us onto greater things. Right, very um, true. But, uh, and, and as it goes for progress or goals, you know, not everybody has to aspire to be a captain or an officer or whatever. You know, if you want to be a firefighter, your entire career or whatever your position is, be the best firefighter, be the best officer, be whatever you are, be the best that you can be and always make progress. Exactly. And again, you know, if we were, if we were perfect, we wouldn't need these, would we? <laughs> that's we'll that's right. I, I need a lot of those erasers. A yeah, lot of them. So do I. So do I. Again, a love number 11. This is, has not just a fire service folks. This is in your life your profession, think before you speak. It even applies to your kids. Imagine how many problems would be solved in the world if uh, our, I would say, are prevented, not only solved or prevented, uh, if we actually thought before we spoke. And it only takes, you know, maybe three to five seconds before we blurt out what we shouldn't have said. And, uh, you know, around the firehouse kitchen table, uh, on a scene or in a meeting, think about how many problems or issues could have been prevented by if, if we were to think before we uh, speak. And I share the think principle in the book, you know, is whatever you're gonna say thoughtful, is it helpful, is it inspiring, is it necessary, is it kind? So if it, you can check all the boxes with those, I think that, that's uh, a good way to, uh, you know, that's your filter for what we really needs to be said. Right, and, and you know, later in the list is the one about don't put anything on the internet that you're gonna regret. Mm -hmm. And I think what we just talked about is in um, we think before you speak, think before you press send. Yeah, the think, text before, message. think before you post, think before right. you think send. Before you I send. agree with that. Because, you know, we've seen over the last several years, it's calmed down a little bit, but we know a couple of years ago for about two years, there was a lot of vitriol 
on social media between the fire service, either talking about generational differences mm -hmm. or tactics differences. Yeah, and you, whether it's career versus volunteer, right. it's uh, exterior, interior attack or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Think before you, you post and, and is what you are saying going to help the conversation or is it going to set it backwards? Right. And remember though, once it's online, it's very difficult to get lost. That's right. Even if you uh, think about deleting it later, did someone screenshot it or take exactly. a picture of it? <laughs> exactly. Um, next couple really kick in. Uh, surround yourself with firefighters who make you better. Exactly. Don't hold back because you're new or maybe because you don't know as much. Get in there. Be a part of it. Yeah. That's and the way we learn. I love the saying, and I share it in the book, a rising tide lifts all boats. So mm -hmm. surround yourself with those who are going to lift you up like a rising tide, because uh, that's only going to make you better and identify those people uh, in your life, your personal life, or in your professional life uh, that are dragging you down. And, and if you can, limit your time or exclude you know, yourself from them completely if possible, because uh, I'm a person who, um, when negativity is around me, I feel like it just infects me um, and it brings me down. I don't know if you're the same way, um, but you know, I love to surround myself with positive people. And that's why, you know, the book is just a positive message of, of how we can all move forward. And, you know, I've received countless messages and, and emails of people who just be like, I didn't know that there was someone else who thought like me. Um, and, you know, I'm so glad you wrote this book and uh, just thank you for doing it. And I love getting those messages, but uh, I love that people have identified and found encouragement, you know, within this book and, and the document you're sharing as well, the 101 rules. Um, they're like, yes, there's someone that thinks like me. I don't feel all alone anymore. And I think, you know, with the, the, this message of positivity, I think we need to start sharing that more. Um, so other people can identify with it. And like we said before, a rising tide lifts all boats. Absolutely. And these next two are key, absolutely key. Firefighting takes a team. Mm -hmm. you cannot succeed on your own. Yeah. What's the African proverb? If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Right. Uh, so uh, if, if you think that you can achieve success in the fire service all by yourself, you're, you're sadly mistaken because uh, from day one, uh, you know, if you're the rookie, it takes a team uh, and our team needs people to contribute. Our team needs uh, people to give their input and uh, our team needs encouragement. And that goes the same for uh, the chief of the fire department. You know, uh, it, you're not all on your own. You need your team uh, to make sure that uh, your fire department is at its best. Um, and, uh, uh, I think any time that a person thinks that they can do it on their own, um, that shows really a lack of humility, uh, which was rule number one, as you shared. Um, and so, like I said before, humility is the foundation to everything else, to teamwork. It's the, it's the foundation to leadership. It's the foundation to learning. Um, it's the foundation to coaching. Everything is tied back to humility. Um, and uh, like you said, it all comes back to the team and we can't achieve success really on our own. Right. You know, that was kind of like the basis of the, when uh, Joe DeVito asked me to teach at the fire college and he said, you know, you're passionate about something you better figure it out and write it up because you're teaching. And that's right. And I came like it or not. <laughs> and I came up with uh, the elephant in the firehouse when ego gets in the way of passion. Exactly. As firefighters, we're naturally passionate. Most of mm -hmm. us, we, it's a calling. We, Something brought us to that job. That's right. Uh, again, does make any difference, career, volunteer, wildland, something called us there. And we need to realize that to do so, we have to be a part of something. You, you, mm -hmm. You've never seen a one-person firehouse. That's right. That's right. We're all in it together. Exactly. Exactly. This one I love, honor the fire service traditions of the past. Yeah. Yeah. And that doesn't we mean we need to follow every single tradition uh, because there are good traditions. There are bad traditions, but we can honor those traditions because uh, as, as we all have heard before, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Right. So um, we didn't just arrive at where we're at in the fire service today. And yes, there is still room for improvement. There's still room for progress. But 
uh, we do need to identify how the fire service started, especially the, um, the American fire service. We need to know our history, um, what was good, what was bad, and the traditions that we had. Um, and that was actually one of my favorite chapters that I wrote in the book. It's called Change. And so first I lay out basically the history of the American Fire Service. And it was really fun getting to research that and, and how we have evolved as, as the U.S. Fire Service. Did you find the, uh, the little argument between Cincinnati and Boston? That's right. Yeah. The career department? You know, That's ben, right. Old Ben you know, has the first volunteer department. Yeah. We can argue that one. Officially. Yeah. But, you know, Cincinnati and Boston like to. That's right. And, and the first professional service. That's right. And so I, I, I actually speak to, and it's a brief history. It's not like all encompassing or that could be its own book altogether. Right. Sure. But, you know, I, I identify how much the American fire service has changed and how we as successful firefighters need to adapt and evolve with that change because you know what, we're probably going to be doing something different in six months from now and we need to adapt and evolve with that change to be successful, not only for ourselves, but in, in the service delivery that we give our citizens, right? Because sure. obviously they expect the most out of us. Career volunteer, it doesn't matter. They expect the most out of us and we need to make sure that we're adapting to that change and, and succeeding in that way. Yeah, that, that, that chapter could have been called um, the uh, firefighters two favorite sayings. The, uh, we don't like change and we don't like status quo. <laughs> that's right. That's how I started the chapter Good. from Brunacini. Yep. Brunacini, yeah, that's great. And I actually wrote in underneath it. And after honoring the fire service in the past, I wrote and seek the knowledge to help its future. That's right. Because if that's we right. can't continue to build the firefighter, the firefighting future, who will the future firefighters look back? at yeah. what will they look back at to say oh wow those guys really were ahead of the time with what their thoughts and their tactics or something like that exactly and um the last one i'm going to do because this list is is great but i don't i'm not going to we're not going to take up all the time i want you to talk more about the book number 20 own every role and responsibility of your position that's right that's and right that's we all we all have different responsibilities. We all have different roles within our own positions, but we need to own them every single, every single way. Me as a company officer, you know, you think as the company officer, you're just going to lead your, your crew on a scene. Uh, you're going to help for a successful mitigation of the incident, right? But there's so much more to being a, su a successful company officer, right? So we need to make sure that we're mentoring our people. We're coaching them. We need to make sure that we are training them, you know, every single day, whether it's company training or something more on the shift or battalion level, we need to make sure that we're training our people as well. You know, if you're the rookie, make sure you own everything that's within your scope. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, the officer position or anything like that, but uh, you know, rookie, driver, engineer, apparatus operator, whatever you want to call it, we all have our unique roles and responsibilities and the, we need to make sure that we're owning them uh, and, and especially the magnitude of our responsibility because as I say in the book, when lives depend on us, success is our only option. So um, we need to make sure that we're bringing our A game and owning everything that is within our own role and responsibilities. All right, absolutely true. So. Folks, if you want to just get this list, it's available for free download. Um, at It's called 101 Rules for Firefighter Success. The firefightersuccessbook.com will have the link uh, on uh, the captain's uh, uh, page on our guest, uh, guest section uh, for you. And you can go there and you can download it from there. But Cap, let's talk a little bit more about the book itself. Now, what, you know, you've worked very hard with Dan many years on the fitness. You guys have toured all over the country. You've spoken at every major conference, every regional conference, and probably a couple of individual firehouses as well. Oh, yeah. Each. And, and it's been a great message, and it could not have come at a more important time. Uh, you guys were just, you know, breaking through this in 2015-16, and mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to, you guys were kind enough to join me, and we talked about it. So what led you to, from working you know, on, the, on the fitness side of it, which you still, of course, do 100% on your side, to writing this kind of book for firefighter success? 
Yeah, so it's an interesting story of how this all started. And, and I guess the basis of, of the book really comes back to my passion for mentorship, leadership, and training. So, um, you know, fitness is definitely a, a passion of mine, without a doubt. And I, I love uh, helping firefighters improve with their health and wellness and their fitness, without a doubt. Um, but I'm not just a one trick pony, as they say. So, um, you know, I am someone, I'm a captain, I'm a company officer, and I'm someone who I, like I just mentioned, my passions, I love to coach, I love to mentor, I love to lead and train my crew and others. Um, so those have always been long standing passions of mine. Um, so that's really the basis of where this started. Um, when I was writing for firefightertoolbox.com, this actually was a small article idea just like Firefighter Functional Fitness was. It was an article uh, idea that started off. But uh, this started off as uh, like 10 C's to Firefighter Success was my original title, I believe. And so I had 10 of these C's written out, um, you know, stuff like courage, compassion, commitment, all the things that are important uh, for great firefighters, for successful firefighters. Um, and so I, I just kind of let it sit on the back burner, never uh, posted it, never published it within Firefighter Toolbox, and just let it sit. I mean, this was back probably in 2014 when I started writing online articles. Um, and so over the years, it's just kind of sat, and I mainly focused on firefighter functional fitness. Um, so lo and behold, uh, in 2019, the beginning of 2019, I got assigned to a slower station, uh, one of our quote unquote retirement stations, which uh, it doesn't get as many calls. Um, and I'm someone who cannot sit still, as you probably know about me, a uh, very type A task oriented person. Um, and so I had a little bit more time at the firehouse. Um, and I said, well, uh, when I have more free time at the firehouse, I'm going to work on this. Um, and so I really developed it. Uh, I had up to 25 C's that I developed, but I cut it back to 20. I thought that was more a sweet spot. Um, and I really, what it all comes down to, I really just wanted to provide a resource for every firefighter at every level uh, that will help them su be successful within their fire service career and in their personal lives as well. Um, and if I could boil it down even further, if my son or daughter's wanted to start in the fire service, I wanted to give them a resource for what I believe would help them be successful throughout their career. Um, and just guiding personal leadership principles that would help them be at their best and help them be as successful as possible. Um, so I wrote the entire uh, manuscript uh, in 2019, and then I sp spent the good part of 2020, uh, you know, just adapting it how how I wanted it to look like, you know, the cover, the back cover, all those good things, uh, how the inside pages, you know, how I wanted them to look. Um, as you can tell, there's a lot of graphics and, and different quotes in there as well. So I worked with a photographer as well for certain images and what did I, I wanted to show and convey to the reader. Um, so uh, I don't know if you call me a perfectionist, but you know I wanted every detail in it to look exactly the way I wanted to to look. Um, so I spent the great a great part of 2020 just really getting it uh, ironed out how I wanted to look, my logos and all that good stuff. And then finally, I was like, okay, you know, you you raise a kid and you send them off to college or you send them off to life, you know, eventually. And uh, I was like, at the end of 2020, I need to get this this out. So I finally launched it and and released it and. I'm grateful for how it's been received uh, by the fire service. Uh, you know, it's already in 10 countries worldwide and it's been only been out for four months and I've got fire departments uh, ordering, uh, you know, bulk orders for their officers, for their new recruits, for, you know, their, their probationary firefighters, for, for everybody. So I'm really grateful for that and um, just grateful for the feedback I've already gotten on it. That's, that's wonderful. And I know the, that concept of perfection you're writing because when I wrote my nonfiction about how I wound up in the fire service, um, it, I, I was the same way. I wanted yeah. everything to flow smoothly of, of each part of the journey because I was I was trying to explain to people the journey that was never meant to be. Yeah, you know, I never planned on being a firefighter, but yeah. it happened. Same and, here. <laughs> and so, and so, I wanted that the story of what it was like. The, the people I met, uh, and again, you mentioned it before about mentorship, uh, which I was going to throw in, and then I, I want to let you get to the book, because I think that 
probably one of the best pieces of advice us old retired disabled firefighters and, and the mid guys like, like you and, and, and Dan can give is that seek out a mentor. Mm-hmm. Don't just go up to somebody and ask them questions roughly and say, tell me how to do this. Mm-hmm. We didn't seek out a mentor. Actually, the mentor that my buddy and I had in Greensboro really took us on. He brought us in because he saw us down the fire, at the firehouse so frequently. We were looking. We were going through the cabinet so we could learn the first engine company so we could ride with it because you had to know the, the, every cabinet inside and out before you could even get an assignment to ride. And we, I just wanted that all of that to come out so that the reader understands that, no, I wasn't a six-year-old kid who was, said, I'm always going to be a fireman when I grow up. I'm going to be a fireman when I grow up. I yeah. had other plans. But I want them to see that you can still follow a path mm-hmm. and be who you wanted to be initially in your life goal and do something else that serves your community. Exactly. It doesn't have to be the fire service or EMS. It, it can be serving the town council. It can can be a, on a bo- county or city board or something like that. But find a way to both grow and give back and either be a mentor mm-hmm. or find that right mentor. And I think or, yeah. this list and I think the book really punches that, that, that goal that this is a way to learn but I'm not, I'm just telling you things to do. I'm not telling you how to do them. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think is so inspiring by even this list here. Yeah. There are and like signposts on the highway. That's, that's what, right. Guiding principles. And that's it. I love that you brought up the importance of, of, you know, finding a mentor because chapter one is what I start with being coachable. Right. So that's, that's the first chapter. And, and of course I mentioned within that chapter, you know, things we've talked about before, being a lifelong learner, being humble, being teachable. Um, but like you said, find that mentor, you know, and, and, and find the person who's going to help you on your pathway to su- success. But I also end the book with chapter 20, being a coach, being a mentor. So we've, we've you know, went through the entire book and we, we identified being coachable is so important. But as we come to the, you know, a point in our fire service career, we need to be that coach. We right. need to be that mentor to where we are pouring into others. You know, whether you have five years on the job or some people have 30 years on the job, you know, identify those individuals who have that potential, who need to grow. And we all need to grow, but identify those individuals who you know are willing to grow and pour into them and pass on your experience, pass on your knowledge, train them and coach them and mentor them in a way that's going to help them succeed. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Okay, folks, we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, uh, if you're watching the video, you won't see anything different. If you're listening to the audio, we'll have a few words and we hope you'll stay tuned with that. And we'll be back with my guest, Captain Jim Moss, as we talk about his new book, The Firefighter Success Book, and you'll find it at firefightersuccessbook.com. So we'll be right back right after these words. As always, please stay tuned. And we're back with this episode of Five Alum Task Force and my guest, a good friend of the podcast, Captain Jim Moss. And we're here talking about his uh, recent book, uh, Firefighter Success Book. You can find it online at www.firefightersuccessbook.com. And when you get to that website, Please don't hesitate to download the 101 rules for firefighter success. Um, they are amazing. Uh, they're, there's, they're comfort, it's almost like comfort food. I think that's the best way to do it. it it's I not, like that. It, they're not beating you like with a, with a baseball bat. Do this. Do every order the chief gives you. Do, you know, scrub the toilets if you're told to do it. No. It's more of a grow with these these recommendations and grow with the book grow to be a better person and if you're a better person you're going to be a better firefighter that's right so let's continue on with a little bit more of of what you're seeing in the book you said you've now have you have it in uh, nine countries you're getting orders from departments uh, not just individuals which is always a great great thing to see so t- Tell us more of what your thinking is now. Now the book's out, you've gotten comments, you've gotten feedback to it. Uh, what are some of the standout uh, tales or stories you've heard already by people who people have read it or, or read the 101 uh, concepts? 
Yeah, I think more than anything, um, it speaks to firefighters and aspiring firefighters. It speaks to officers. It speaks to, you know, officers at the higher level, lower level. Um, so that's the standout thing that I love seeing is that it, it touches people on such a wide spectrum uh, because they are universal personal leadership principles that will help everybody succeed. Uh, so that's the most rewarding thing. Um, you know, someone said the other day, uh, I, I see your book is, is for aspiring firefighters and I had to reach back out to them. I was like, well, actually it's for, for everybody. Um, and, you know, like you said before, these are life principles that even if you're not a firefighter, I mean, yes, it is geared towards firefighters, but even if you're not a firefighter, these principles are gonna help you succeed in your personal life as well, because uh, I can say that they've definitely helped me be successful in my own personal life. So, um, and I love that you just said, if you got your ducks in, in, in order in your personal life, it's only gonna help you be a su successful firefighter or, or be successful in the fire service. And I couldn't agree more with that because I've seen too many firefighters who are skilled, they're very knowledgeable, um, but they don't have their personal life in order. And that shows eventually in the fire service, right? With how they treat oh. others. Um, and, and as you said before, you know, ego is the enemy, right? So, uh, you know, those firefighters who believe it's all about them, they're definitely going to crash and burn eventually. And I love the saying that, uh, you know, you can either be humbled or you're going to, or you can either be humble or you're going to be humbled eventually. Right. So, uh, so I would rather choose the former than the latter. Um, and, uh, but anyway, yeah, I love the fact that it's had such a universal appeal from um, all different ranks, all different times of uh, service within the fire service. Uh, and that's what's really stood out to me the most. Um, I've had people, um, uh, 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 captain, uh, new captain in California, she said, I read your book twice. I highlighted it. I used it for prep before my promotion. And he said, I got promoted. And he said, without a doubt, your book is, is definitely helped me uh, achieve uh, the right mindset um, during the promotional process. And more importantly, becoming a good officer after I became promoted. So that was really rewarding seeing that and just also getting stories from, from aspiring firefighters who became firefighters um, and help told me that it's helped them have the right mindset to, you know, not only becoming a firefighter, but being successful as a rookie, uh, as a rookie firefighter as well. So that's really, you know, the, the appeal that it's had, the universal appeal within all ranks, all levels in the fire service, that's really what's been most rewarding to me, uh, getting all that feedback. That's great. And, and one of the other things I, uh, I deduced from reading the 101 and we've been talking this morning is, uh, one of my previous guests, uh, Dr. Gamali Elbert, who wrote his, uh, e got his EDD and his um, dissertation, won dissertation of the year at USC. It was all about making a health, overall healthy fire service. And he didn't mean just physical health. Right. It was overall health. And one of the things he defines in one of his podcasts, he did three, three, three of us, three podcasts with us in three parts. And he has a fourth one coming up next month. But one of the things he said about leadership what defines leadership separate from management is that leadership is when you move the person you're working with mind, body, and soul. That's right. That's leadership. You yeah. can tell somebody, all right, rookie, go clean the toilets. Right. That's management. Yeah. That's just management. But when you can change a person, the way they think, the way they act and the way they feel, yeah, that's being a true leader. Yeah. And yeah, I really believe that leadership, it, it all comes back to positively impacting and positively influencing those within your sphere of influence. And as we all know, you don't have to carry rank to do that, right? Exactly. You know, we have leaders uh, that are, uh, you know, whether it's a, a firefighter with five years on or 25 years on, um, whether it's uh, male, female, black, white, it doesn't matter. If you positively influence, if you positively impact those around you to make them better, mind, body, and soul, like you said, become better people, uh, help them aspire and be more, help them achieve their potential or push their potential to be more, then you're a leader. And this is something that you and Dan have been even promoting on, on the physical fitness side. 
is that you can be a physical fitness leader for your department as well once you gra gra grasp it for yourself and understand why it's so important. And uh, the two of you, Aaron Zamzow, um, oh, there were a couple of others I just can't recall with my old gray, gray cells falling out. But <laughs> it, it, all of those, all of you who specialized in the physical fitness part of being or the overall fitness and health and welfare of firefighters have really used the same thing is that it's it's something that it's not just unique to you but it's something when you're into it you can share that and you can make it better for other people so you may not be an officer but mm -hmm. if you start doing a good workout and you drop you know 15 pounds and you're feeling better and people are saying hey bob you look great look hey you built a little muscle there i see your shoulders how'd you do it share it with me tell me if when you do that you're becoming that a leader you're becoming a mentor for that next firefighter yeah giving him and, the opportunity to learn yeah and two things come to mind when you just said that one is that leadership is all about action right right you know we, we got ton, tons of books on on leadership theory and uh you know i made it a point within my book and also with the 101 rules that it is all about action. And so at the end of each chapter, just like Firefighter Functional Fitness, how we wrote that, at the end of each chapter of Firefighter Success, there are tangible action steps um, that relate to directly what the reader just read. There's tangible action steps, whether it's having some honest introspection, uh, making a list or setting a goal, whatever it is, there's uh, tangible action steps for each person to take. And I really believe that with leadership, you know, we have so many books, we have so many workshops, presentations, seminars on theory, right? But what happens after that, right? Um, yeah. We need to take action, whether it's our fitness, whether it's our leadership, whether it's becoming just a better firefighter. And then secondly, what came to mind when you were just talking is that leaders, as we all know, lead by example. Right. Some of them have a good example, some of them have a bad example, but leaders and the good ones lead by positive example. And so like you were just saying, that guy or gal who lost 15 pounds by doing the right thing, taking action, taking ownership and responsibility of their personal fitness, while other people are like, hey, I'm, you know, they're starting to take notice. They're starting to say, hey, I want to be like him or her. I want to lose 15 pounds. I want to do the same thing as well. And so I love that kind of quiet, humble leadership where, you know, maybe people aren't necessarily in your face with like, you know, do this, follow me, follow me, you know, do this, but they're doing their own thing and people are noticing, right? And they're leaders. And so other people are like, I want to be like that. So you're, those kind of people are, are the positive influencers and they're making a positive impact through their own quiet personal example. And that's what I love to see. And th there's also other leaders, you know, who are out there corralling the troops, motivating, inspiring, you know, in a more, you know, inspirational, if you want to say in your face kind of way, that's, that's great too. Um, but, you know, you can, like we said before, you can be a leader at any level uh, in your own style. Uh, just make sure you lead by example and you're taking action and, and you're trying to do it in a positive way that positively impacts others. You know, we, during this pandemic, we've seen a lot um, of, uh, uh, videos on the various social media, really great videos by firefighters who they couldn't work out in the gym room at the station. Their, their gym, the professional gym was closed. So they mm -hmm. said, well, look, I got to stay in shape. So they started with a couple of gallon milk, milk bottles. Uh, I, I saw one with a guy just starting with water and then he put oil in and right. then he put sand and he was, yeah. and that's, that's what he was doing. He was doing exercises in his garage and filming them to show that you can still exercise and stay in shape uh, when you can't work out in, in the gym at the firehouse. And yeah. I just thought that was, that was inspirational to me. Exactly. That, we um, need those people that gives us those ideas that inspire right. us to do those different things. And, and if, one, if there's one thing that the pandemic gave us is the gift of more time you know, uh, maybe he can't go to the gym, maybe he can't go to the firehouse to work out, but he still, or we all still have this certain amount of time that if we're not going and doing other things going out, we better make sure we're making good use of this time that we've, we've been given um, uh, to make sure we can still get a body weight workout in or a, wor a workout in with milk jugs uh, right. filled with different levels of things. And it just comes back to our own accountability, our ownership, and our 
uh, creativity, if you will, you know. Exactly. And, and again, one, that's one of the positive sides of social media today. Is yeah. We, we had the ability to, to see lots of people that we never saw before. We would not have known yeah. if they didn't take that initiative to, to do that. And I see those kind of people as being new leaders. Mm -hmm. The change agents. Right. Ch ag agents of change. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. In their, in their department. And not just their department. I mean, social media hits all over the world. And these people could be helping how many, you know, an unknown number of people who found that video, those videos and said, I can do that too, no matter what language they spoke. They just saw what he was doing, saw the translation below and, and did it to do the same thing, to stay in shape because they were in the same situation. Yeah. And I just had a great conversation on uh, the Firefighter Success podcast that I host. I just had a great conversation with Chief Devin Wells. Um, from Oregon. And uh, one of my questions, you know, he's a former president of the ISFSI, the International Society of Fire Service Instructors. Um, he's been a lifelong instructor, taught at, you know, multiple conferences, you know, FDIC, all these different places. And, you know, a really inspirational instructor and, and trainer and educator of the fire service. And I said, you know, there's, there's, firefighters and fire officers who want to get into teaching, instructing, especially on the national and regional level. I was like, what advice do you have for them? And it, it was simple. It's two words, do it, you know, just get out there and do it and put yourself out there and take action and have the courage to do it. And I thought that was so great is that so many times we just sit back and we're scared or, you know, we're, we aren't willing to be vulnerable, right? We're not willing to fail. We're not willing to make mistakes along our journey. We need to get out there and do it. And so, you know, if you think that I don't get flack or feedback for me being out there writing books like Firefighter Success or Firefighter Functional Fitness or being out there on social media promoting, you know, the positive, having a positive message, you know, if you, don't, if you think I don't get flack or, or, or you know, criticism uh, from people for doing that, you know, you're, you're, you're mistaken because, right. uh, but when it all comes back to believing in your message, uh, being passionate about your message and, and having those core values, you know, uh, within yourself that, uh, for me are the non-negotiables. And that's one of the things I talk about in the book is that you have to have core values and you have to have your non-negotiables about what you're all about, because if you don't decide what you're all about, someone else is going to decide for you. Right. right. Good point. Um, so you need to know who you are and what you're all about and what your mission is, what your vision is, what your core values are to move forward with, with all that. So long winded answer. But, uh, you know, if, if you're on the fence about anything, you know, whether it's a, being an instructor or, you know, going for a, an officer position or going to whatever the next level is for you, do it. You know, put yourself out there, be vul vulnerable you know, have courage over fear and be willing to make mistakes. I agree a thousand percent. Joe was the one who pushed me to go teach, even though I hadn't taught anything in the fire service. I hadn't spoken to, I'd done lots of teaching for major groups and stuff in my civ civilian work. But he said, you're passionate and you're a teacher. You've always been a teacher. So yeah. you can teach something that's important to you. And so I did, and I thought I was doing it as a lark and I took the challenge and then the day after I taught the class, they tell me, well, you have to sign these certificates. I said, why? Because you taught the class. These people are getting credit for it. I said, but I'm just me. I, I'm, no, I'm nobody there. So, oh no, we're entering you now in. You're gonna be a state, a state of Florida certified instructor. There you go, sign on this line. Yeah, and so it, you know, to me, I was thrilled. And luckily I was able to come back the following year. I had retooled it a little bit and, uh, uh, Joe and I are working on retooling it a little bit more for the next opportunity that might come up. But I really did embrace it. I love, you know, the first time I was nervous as you are the first time, anytime you're going to do something in front of right. a, a class, whether it's a whole crowd or, you know, 15 people. Um, and I had made up a survey, a health survey, an anonymous health survey that the, our, the, our team at uh, Uni uh, University of Miami, Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center Research were very interested in, they said, would you share the results of the anonymous survey with me about firefighter health and wellness? And I said, sure. And so I brought back 12 surveys and they loved it. And then I did it the following year and I brought 
like 19 of them back. And, and that, that really cemented it for me that what Joe asked me to do, and I was uncomfortable doing, put me into a position where I said, you're, you're still a teacher. You've always been a teacher. You've never really stopped teaching. Yeah. So just teach a different crowd with something that's important to them and to you. And that's you right. do embrace it and you learn to embrace it. Um, and I think that I, I would back up exactly what you said a thousand percent, that if you feel that you have that urge inside you, that you want to share something, you might start off just being a mentor. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that two or three years later, you're not going to be instructing at a conference because of what grew that seed that you planted to be a mentor for one or two people in your department more people came to ask you, can you teach us how to do that? Can you teach us? And next thing you know, you're, you're teaching and you're sharing that passion and that knowledge with others who haven't heard it yet as well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so many things come to mind while you were saying that, but, uh, you know, just getting out of our comfort zone is just so important. Um, you know, whether it's actually, you know, pushing yourself to um, go to the next level, whether it's a promotion, whether it's um, learning a new task or, or whatever it is, or, or if it's instructing, whatever it is, getting out of your comfort zone uh, and making sure that you stay uncomfortable sometimes, that's, that's really good for our own personal growth and having right. that, that growth mindset uh, is really so important. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the, the saying, and I might butcher it, but the saying that uh, fear uh, or the fear of failure has killed more dreams than failure ever has, right? So making sure that we don't fear failure more than failure itself is, is incredibly important. Um, because I, as I share many personal stories within the book, you know, I've failed uh, throughout many times in my life. Um, but the only true definition of failure is, is when we stay down and we don't get back up. Right. Um, you know, we're going to make mistakes. Um, let's make sure we, we learn from them. And even better, if we can teach others from our mistakes, that, that's even better. But uh, making sure that uh, we allow ourselves to be vulnerable, to, to fail um, and momentarily, but in the end, be victorious uh, and whatever our goals are is, is really the most important thing. And, and, and making sure that we put our pride aside. There, there it comes back again, right? Pride and ego. Right. We, we put that aside to make sure that we're successful in our goals. Um, and if that means, you know, making mistakes along the way, that's just part of the journey. Well, I, I, I know you busy schedule. I can't thank you enough for cutting an hour out to, to visit with us again. Oh, this is um, fun. I love doing this. Uh, well, I know you appreciate it. Your emails are always very kind. And uh, I really do deeply appreciate the time that you and Dan have given to me over the years. It's always fun to have you guys on. We have a great time talking. You have great messages that you share. This is this brand new one is, is remarkable. Folks, I cannot recommend enough. Start off with downloading the special report, 101 Rules for Firefighter Success. When you read through this, and I'm going to tell you, you need to read through. I read through it three times yesterday. Uh, the second time I had my marker in hand to, to make some highlights and I couldn't even cover them because it would have been a seven hour uh, <laughs> uh, podcast with, with uh, Captain Moss had we, had we done that. But um, download that free thing. It's an Adobe file. Open it up. Take some quiet time. Read it. Put it aside and then come back and read it again, maybe the next day and then read it again and have your marker available because there are things in here that are going to guide your life into the fire service. And when you finish reviewing the 101 rules, pick up the book, okay? Because that's going to be, well, if you think this was the guide, this is just the start. This is the welcome mat to reading this. That's the book. appetizer. It's the appetizer, right? <laughs> the appetizer to getting into the meat of, or the fish or the good veggies of the book um, and where Captain Jim Moss uh, will take you um, I am anxious now, having examined this document so well the last uh, 24 hours that I'm really anxious, looking forward to reading this book. And I, I wish you tremendous success with it, Jim. I know it's, it's great now already. It's, it's taken off. But I know there's going to be a lot more. You know, we're, gonna, we're slowly getting back to a new normal and slowly getting back to meet and actually meet each other. 
Yes. You may not be able to shake hands yet. We'll maybe still do elbow bumps and stuff, but there you we'll go. be able to teach again in crowds and speak again in crowds, not just on webinars. And I think that this is going to be, uh, this book is going to be one of the great tools that this generation of firefighters is going to able to put in their library, you know, read it and live by uh, many of, of the concepts and ideas that you present in it. So uh, we've sent you all the very, very best luck with it. And again, sincere thanks for taking some time out this morning to join us. No, it's all, always a pleasure. I have a great time when I'm here. And thanks for your generosity of, of just having me on. And I also, if, if you don't want, mind, I want to let all the listeners know and uh, all the viewers know that a portion of each book purchase goes to first responder charities. Uh, so that's something near and dear to me. So um, know that. And also uh, make sure you listen to the Firefighter Success Podcast. Uh, all the great places that the, uh, you know, your, your podcast is, is hosted to. Uh, you can also go to firefightersuccesspodcast.com and listen to it there as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll add that actually to my list that I do on some of the shows. Perfect. Thank you. Isn't that all right. Well, our sincere thanks to Captain Jim Moss for sharing some time with us talking about uh, his book, Firefighter Success Book. Again, you can find it at firefightersuccessbook.com. I will have a link to it on uh, his uh, notice on the, on the guest page. Uh, and uh, again, don't forget to download that report, special report, 101 Rules for Firefighter Success. And uh, if you're watching the video, this will be the end of the video. You'll see the credits. If you're listening to the audio, we'll be right back with a little bit more right after these words. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for viewing. Stay safe and stay well.